Hey everybody, welcome to Hi. Into Space. It's Hello. January 29th, for sure. No question about what it is. And we're playing Dreadlords Into Space. Thank you, into cast and crew. Uh, Bill Bunkum, Ken Hal, Daniel Hulker, Drizzle, Andrea Elliott Johnson, and others. Score by all lowercase letters and missed to interrupt. Our Patreon uh, is something that we're going to rewind a little bit and and say it again because it just went by and I didn't talk fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Our Patreon, uh, which you should join in to that uh, that group. Uh, members are Tim Roberts, Daniel Tim Hulker, Roberts. and Nostalgic. Daniel Hulker. Nostalgic. A very elite group of, of people. Thank you for... Art and Media by Couch Fire Media uh, Productions and Trois Replay Productions. Thank Over you there. for uh, story and ideas and all that other stuff. Uh, just subscribe today, soldier, and become a citizen. Subscribe and become a citizen. Into space. We're back. Into space. So you guys are in the montage. You have escaped. Montage. You've eluded the SS, SS capital ship. Uh, oh. They are in pursuit. Doesn't look like the capital ship itself is coming. Uh, Josh, who's on the sensors, will note. It looks like you have a cadre, a pack of fighters. Uh, since you've actually bid Josh to do the sensors, their transponders comes in. The kind of fighters these are, they are called Nats. G-N-A-T. It's an old kind of starfighter. Uh, if you guys want to uh, know something about it and such, you can. Um, yeah, so there's a few of those. We'll say uh, six of them are coming after you. It's going to be um, I believe in 45-ish minutes before they're able to get here. They have deployed their light sails. Um, actually, we'll say it's about 30 minutes because you're in a, uh, a binary star system and there's more solar wind uh, so they can accelerate faster. Um, you all are far quicker than they are with your gravity drive. All right. There you go. You got uh, an icy planet off your uh, back port uh, side. You've got uh, straight ahead 10 drive minutes, uh, Novus Terra. Uh, just beyond that, uh, Novus Prime, which is the gas giant. And there's a few other uh, astral bodies here, which you can investigate if you wish. Actions on you all, Montage. Um, what do you think about the losing these guys or something? We have a couple different options. <clears throat> so we can just put the far... in the airlock. Ah, that's not And open it. We could do that. We could do that. Got to lose them. You want to put what in the airlock again? Sir, weren't you talking about losing the prisoners? No. Oh. <laughs> we want the prisoners. I want I want to interrogate the prisoners. Uh, so let's keep those guys uh for the moment uh, losing losing our our followers. Well, in that case, sir, if you want to interrogate them, I think there's no better place than than the airlock just so they kind of get the point. <laughs> you know. True. I don't I don't think these guys are on the same team. So 
Um, <clears throat> I think that that is is certainly a real um, a real issue. So, um, Adrena, will you? Do you have any ideas for for how we can get them out here? I mean, do we just run run the drive again, and once they get here, we 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 uh, push what what Burgess said. And we fly in from the the direction of the sun somehow. And, I mean, there's uh, a few different there's a, there's different options we can take. I am wondering if we don't want to just kind of, you know. Eliminate a few of these ships right here and now. Oh, what are, what are your ideas for doing that? I mean, I don't I don't want us to die of a thousand cuts either. I no, mean, six, but if we're but taking away ships, some or... of their snub fire support is not a bad idea either. Because I don't think that they really have the ability to replace their fighters very easily. Because otherwise, they wouldn't be using such old tech. Yeah, well, we don't have the ability to replace us. We're all we get. We don't have backup. We don't have uh, a landing. If one one of them gets a lucky shot off, we're kind of boned. So, hey, <laughs> here's the my question is, for you. Yeah. What What's your end game here? Uh, the end game is to reestablish the trade routes. Uh, being in and dogfights with other ships is not an end goal. Well, um, hit and run tactics isn't going to give you a better negotiating position. Well, we keep them edgy. Mm, we keep them uh, clear. I do want to message them uh, here in a li little bit. I mean, do, do communications go? They go a little bit faster than. <clears throat> uh, Josh looks up at you on sensors. He says, uh, well, in this system, sir. It would be normal communication, so light speed. Uh, light speed. Yeah, a few minutes from where we are. Let's uh, let's go ahead and open a channel to their ship if we've got a minute uh, to breathe. Uh, as he types in the calculation, you guys are ten gravity drive minutes away, so ten petre we can call it, since it is called a petre drive. Um, which is light speed. So you're 10 light minutes away. Thanks. So a conversation will take 10 minutes each way. Cool. Well, we'll... Uh, the other option, sir, is to launch a buoy, but I mean, we only, we only have a few of those. Well, let's wait on the buoy. I just want to start introductory introductory surrender on their part uh just reiterate our position and um see if we can make some leeway with their more sane uh with their non like they didn't seem to want to fight us necessarily uh yeah they shot missiles at us and stuff but i mean i don't think they really wanted us to be there uh and there was some there was some drama on the bridge so <laughs> we just I think uh, we got the upper and hand. I know that the drama on the bridge was the guys who shot the person who wanted to talk with us. Sure. So I mean that's gotta cause a little bit of a stir with their uh leadership. It's, Hold it's on. Like... Uh, she'll actually she'll actually look over at um Josh on communications. Do you think we could um send a single that actually taps into their main communications, like bypasses the bridge and sets, he, sets a single out for the rest of the crew. He looks up, he says, uh, maybe they do have older systems for sure. As you see him kind of like curse under his breath, Alfred would be really good for this. Um, uh, Ar Archangel clearly would be good for this as well. He seems to have a knack for Josh looks up at you. With respect, sir, I don't trust him. I don't trust a man that I've never seen his face. Well, he probably heard you say that, so... Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, if it means anything to you all, uh, 
it's good not to trust anyone. <laughs> thank, thank you for your help, Archangel. Yeah, uh, no problem. You, you're a, a very valued ally, and uh, I'm sure sure that you support human life just as we do. Uh, you saw when what we're up against. Uh, you know, they just shot their own. I mean, we don't do that. Uh huh. <laughs> actually, Katrina will actually sort of look away when you say that, having seen what she saw. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think about a message to uh, the crew of their ship? We just we just want to put a message of peace and of love, uh, and to say that we're going to be on our way. Um. And see if we can get some negotiations started. Because this doesn't have to be violent. Archangel? I'm sorry, what? What? Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking to me. Uh, right, <laughs> I was just uh, trying to get this robotic intelligence back online. Um, what are you saying? Uh, I just, I want to put a communication to their whole ship. Uh, like you, you tapped into our communications. Can you do that to them you want me to hack their ship the communications yeah yeah you want to bypass the bridge you want because it seems like there might be some uh, disagreement so i see he types uh into his calm or his his uh, little pit boy thing uh yeah oh yeah 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 i mean that's possible um i'll have to be a lot closer which is not a, really a problem but i gotta be a lot closer than we are now okay. Well, let's let's put a pen in that. Uh, but have that at the ready if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, keep keep working on on our good buddy Alfred. Um. Yeah. So, uh, lo Lieutenant, right? Yeah. Lieutenant. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Neat. There's some there's some some items here that maybe maybe you would like to see. Uh. I mean, I can turn them on right now. Um, but. I don't know if you want me to. Um, There's a lot I, of hidden I'll, files. I'll come down there and take a look here in a second. Um, Josh, make make those calculations. Let's let's just send a little quick re pre-recorded message. Uh, Katrina, I think you should navigate away from this place and and let's strategize a another point uh, where we can we can enter on detective uh here's another question wage communication with that capital ship what is the other since, question since you basically name dropped me do you want me to be a part of the communication to help facilitate uh any negotiations sure if you have some ideas you said that your name is probably not great uh way of of putting any diplomatic i think it depends i i feel like probably it's not going to work out greatly for um those sympathetic to the one who shot their captain that's for sure however if there are those who simply want to have better nego better living standards as opposed to pure independence then that might be good for them in fact, if anything, um, that might actually work to our advantage or to sort of create an even greater divide among their crew. Well, I do think that we, with the SSA, bring better living standards uh, to all our allies and, and how should I, How should I put this? Um, as the uh, uh, descendant of a, an infamous traitor... Um, you guys have a bit of a reputation. So, I mean, this is no offense, uh, but, um... No, if these we don't have a reputation, <laughs> Josh says. If no! These, if, if, these, if these people are dead set on believing in independence, uh, at least Mars is a vaguely neutral power that could be used as a negotiating tactic. That's a good point. 
Um, I I appreciate that that alignment. Uh, we kind of led with the stick. Let's let's throw some carrots out there, because um, it doesn't matter to me one way or another if we get them to rejoin. They just need to. We just need to reestablish our trade routes with them. Holker, will you roll me a d6? This is a chaos die as Dole attempts to recharge your shields. D6. That's a six. As you guys hear the thrum uh, of the shields. <laughs> uh, Dole, uh, Lieutenant, um, do you want me to keep the shields on or save power? Uh, how far are they out? Josh looks up. Uh, looks like about 25 minutes. Go ahead and use your full scanning. Yeah, let's let's pull the shields off until they're close closer. As they throw them down. So that means our shields go back to 20. Yep, they are uh, maxed out. Uh, they know where we are, so please uh, feel free to do active <clears throat> scanning, Josh. Um until we decide to make a play. Uh, I think as soon as we get here, Katrina, I think we take off. Or as soon as they get relatively close, we just jump to another pretty far away point in the system. Oh, so basically like a game of tag, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Maybe map that out. Uh, uh, Lieutenant, do you want me to shoot at them when they pop up before we go, or no? Yeah. I think I think Burgess, you and uh, Gip should just man the turrets. If you see something move, shoot first and ask me if it's okay later. Really? <laughs> Anything? <laughs> Anything? Uh, that is that is an enemy combatant ship. Actually, uh, Burgess, you should follow Skip Trace's. Uh, you just keep your eyes peeled there, Burgess. Yes, sir. Should I should I shoot it at at uh... At stars that move when we when we turn because they're moving. No, no, just just uh, you know, Burgess. I think you should uh, just follow Skip's uh, lead on this one. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I might have you come and join me, uh, and, <laughs> and and we'll join we'll, you, sir. We'll get, we'll, uh, we'll get. Uh, Lieutenant Brick to man that that uh, gun. Brick, are you there? Hi, sir. Uh, Burgess, go and relieve Brick uh, and give her and have her go and man the turret. I am relieved, sir. Uh, Burgess, let's let's go have a have a little communication with our our people. Uh, I'll join you in a minute. <clears throat> Uh, I'm gonna go and and talk to Archangel for a minute. Yep. Um, as Dolby, you move down to where Archangel is. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, Katrina will go ahead and plot the next jump. Um, so that way she's not trying to rush it whenever the people, when the whenever the fighters get there. Hmm. As you're starting to plot the next jump, uh, what about you, Skip? Uh, do I have direct uh, communication to... I want to do a direct communication just to the lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, that's possible? No, oh, it's very easy. You, your comm is... You just switch it over. Okay. I'll Although you are aware to... that Archangel probably can hear you. Well, I think it's it's okay if he's... Yeah. Um, lieutenant... Uh, the stuff that Archangel has for you, we also have a copy when Alfred went down. I did not look at it, but I made a copy of it. So that's probably what Archangel's, Archangel's going to talk to you about. So we have a copy as well. Oh, good. Well, I just need to know what it is, I guess. Uh, um, but let's just keep that between us and Archangel, of course. Yeah. 
All right. So um, that happened yeah. while you were on the pirate ship. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, your shield rating is twenty-five. It's not twenty. My bad. Oh. Better. And I said to you guys, are say scale two. Yes. The scale one. Are we scale two? You should be scale two. Yeah, I thought on you said shield. scale two, but yeah, it's it's scale two. All right, and then they were scale three. They are scale three. Yeah, yeah. I just I just looked at the wrong uh, numbers. <laughs> I was gonna say our ship is weaker than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that still two d four or is that higher? At a skill two. Um, for your shields. Give me a second, just a moment. La 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 la. Are are uh the the AI that is running in the background is yeah. processing like upgrades <laughs> on a <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, you're unlocking shit. It's like a video game. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, really um shit. so your shield rating uh has its shield ratings are one, two, three, and four. And it just mm. depends on the kind of rating that you have. Um you've got shield rating one, which is twenty-five points. And then the classification is based on your ship. I believe your ship is a heavy ship and it's either heavy or medium let me look down here if it's medium it's two die four if it's heavy it's two die six you said two die six earlier for your shields oh no, you no said two, four. yeah, two yeah. so four. so they are they are on medium shields yeah okay. medium shields is what you yeah. said so that's two die four plus one now shields can be upgraded uh you can yeah, you can upgrade all that stuff. Yeth. In time. In time. It's a good playtest for uh, the into space combat stuff. I see that it's a little bit more crunchy than I really want it to be. But if you guys, if you do the space combat enough, then it'll become obvious because it's essentially an extra character sheet for your ship like that's basically what you have to have when you do space combat or just vehicular combat anyway um and some people like to get into that i have simplified rules for if you just kind of want to make it more about the player actions and then it's like okay and you deal this much damage and this is how much like you don't have to get granular with all this stuff okay there's the montage dolby you walk down to uh where Archangel is. <clears throat> um, before we get to that, because it's going to be kind of a big scene, does anyone want to do anything? Mm -mm. All right. Uh, Burgess, you relieve Alice. She smiles at you, taps you on the shoulder, and uh, you realize, perhaps, Burgess, that she uh, she's taken a liking to you, despite your attitude. Uh, maybe even you realize that she considers you, um, she considers you maybe not a friend, but her colleague. Uh, since this is the montage, you don't have to bid or any of that stuff, but you are m possibly more than anyone very aware of how much time has passed because of the crash sleep. And you've seen this happen to a lot of people where it dawns on them that they're really far away from home and everyone that they knew at the at the least is going to be like 20 years older you might realize that alice is realizing that you guys are the closest thing to family and friends that she has <clears throat> however you want to take that as burgess that's something that does cross your mind and I think it makes sense for, for Burgess to understand it. All right. Dolby, you walk up. You see uh, Cherokee Sue somehow still standing in the same position. Uh, he'll be like doing like one foot up, like little calf raises, the other foot, just being enormous 
and at the same time kind of childlike um you know he's very intelligent he just is enigmatic archangel doesn't he's in an iconic pose he's got you know what the tree pose looks like like one foot on the ground the other like leg out he's kind of doing that his toes are touching the ground yeah exactly his toes are touching the ground his wings are out it's an iconic pose of maybe why he's called archangel he's literally kind of floating there something with the technology ha- he has it's he's not mag- magnetically connected to the hull and yet he's staying still uh there's a uh, a green light emanating from his i'm just going to call it a, a pit boy because that's essentially what it is uh on his wrist as he pulls up the hologram and looks over at you uh you know with the helmet and everything oh hey uh so this is what i was talking about as he expands it and shows you this hologram of all these files and uh a very again iron man style uh matrix of of, in, of information uh you wouldn't happen to have a synopsis on this stuff with your you know big picture kind of description of what i'm looking at oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh <clears throat> not technical not technical as you kind of swipe some stuff away uh a lighter green highlight highlights a few of the items okay so those those are for lack of a better word um bits of information and alfred had them disguised and hidden uh Un, he's he's not unconscious because he doesn't have a conscience. He kind of like looks at you. Um, but let's say Alfred's asleep. Let's say that's possible. He's aware I'm tooling with this and he's he's not happy about it, we'll say. Um, it's been a little frustrating. He's been trying to delete these files. But he can't. Oh, because they're they're higher set clearance. We we operate off of uh, set clearance, and he's set. a set clearance. Oh, oh, or, so that's what that is. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So if he was maybe like if you just uh, increase, I guess these are these are all the files, correct? Uh, this is everything that uh, is on this portion of this. Uh, this version of Alfred, I have a feeling he's in a lot of different places. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I bet every time we go back to report uh, with the, the main space station, everything that has transpired over the course of events uh, is sort of downloaded into the, the main core. Oh, yeah, that's what I would do. I would just update it. I mean, I can stop that if you want. Uh, I, you know... I think it's it's fair. I we, we haven't done anything uh, off off uh, out of line, really. Uh, we're, we just we're just doing our job. So I feel like uh, we don't have anything to hide. I think they might be suspicious if it didn't get re-uploaded into. This oh system. yeah. Okay. Well, um, so I translated all this because I, I don't I didn't really speak your language. Uh, sure. Sorry, just a second. As you see all the the weird letters and stuff switch to the common tongue which is esperanto um or guo is the other name for it uh and you can read it i didn't really know what this was as it says uh sock clearance Mm soc right well that's 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 the clearance level uh do you need a code you need my sock clearance, or do you want? Do you, do you have access? Do you do you need access? Is that what you're? Oh no 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 no! I have I have access. What I mean is, oh. I don't know what, what sock means. Oh, it just it's your clearance level. I mean, what what is, what is the level of of clearance that does it say? Well, it it says it says sec level four i'm talking 
I don't know what the what the letters are called. It says sock. Uh, it's phonetic. <laughs> I I can't read your language. Sorry. Yeah. I don't okay. know what sock means. What's a sock? Like like something you put on your foot or you seem kind of like <laughs> cock his head at you. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's probably wrong. I, I, I don't think that's it. Maybe. Uh, I mean, does but, Alfred but, wear it? What? Are we? Are we? We're gonna step it back. Oh, what? What is the? What is the meta? It says S O C. Well, it's the sock. Remember, that's the special organization, like the secret guys who go in and kill stuff. Do you remember? Yeah. I. But yeah. there's a difference between sack and sock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is... has an E and one has an O. Well, sock is the um, is the guy. The sock who... is the CIA. Kinda, yeah. Oh, I get it. So yeah, what is the what are what do the Sigs have? The Sigs, <laughs> that's a different game. Uh, <laughs> he says so. It, Dolby, you will know it means Special Operation Corps. By the way. Yeah. Uh, whereas SEC is security clearance. Uh, you know what that is. It's members of the military who are chosen for operations outside of the normal call of duty. A SOC, yeah. uh, or uh, no, I... the SOC Corps is that. It and is I, different. I think... It is different than an operative. An operative yeah. is called a Vedantoy, which is yeah. uh, the rumored security of the military. SOC means it's special forces. Sure. And Alfred actually had told you uh, yeah, before you Alfred, murdered Brick. Special, or not Brick, before you murdered Brick. Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. And Dustin was special forces. Yeah. Um, what was, can you tell me what Dustin's mission <clears throat> was? Uh, Dustin, Dustin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can open up her file. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> And while you're at it, uh, I think I ask you about Calabash as well, but Dust Stone seems to be more appropriate for the. Just a second. And while you're doing that, I'm going to. Um, I guess there's NPCs around me. I'm going to walk over and check in on Burgess. Burgess! Yes, sir. You watching these guys? I am now. <laughs> I'll just keep an eye <clears throat> an eye on them. If any of them makes any funny moves, you can shoot them. I think they know. Okay, good. Uh, do you find? Hey guys, if you move, I'm gonna shoot you. Oh yeah, yeah, we're not moving. We're not moving. As Kerrigan says. <laughs> Have you found anything out about them? Are you just? Uh... Why don't, why don't you um I'm going to my bad that they don't want to get shot. Uh, why, why don't you give them some interviews while you while you're here with them here in a bit? I'm gonna go and uh So you want me to interview them? Yeah. Tell, tell you me. Do you have any questions you want me to ask? Yeah, it's like what where they're from and you know what their plans are, what they're gonna do, you know, if we let them go. Just general things. Find find out maybe their intention, maybe next moves. Like like for instance, if they were playing chess, you know, ask them, you know, what direction they were gonna move in. Because the more more they tell us where they're gonna move in advance, then then we kind of know where to move our pieces. And certainly they could be lying, but but we at least know that they're thinking about moving that way. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, Skip, how's it looking out there? No signs of them yet, sir. Well, keep Brick, Brick on her toes. Brick, when I fire, you fire. <laughs> <clears throat> As. Archangel, that was funny. As Archangel uh, opens up Dust Stone's uh, file that Alfred has, 
uh, you see the general stuff, um, you know, her age and everything and, you know, where she's from, uh, which I believe she's Martian or she was Martian. Thanks. Um, uh, she's been, has received special accommodation or accommodation, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, her story is the same as she told you. She went on one deeper space cryo mission. Uh, I think I said to Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri. Um, <clears throat> it was, uh, it was not, it was a military operation, but it wasn't, it didn't see violence or anything like that. She has received many special marks from uh, Cyrus. Uh, fuck, hold on, sorry. I'm digging deep into these That's old Cyrus notes. Correct. Uh, Cyrus yeah. is, uh, was her direct. Ava uh, Cyrus. Ava Cyrus, yeah. <clears throat> Um, from Ava Cyrus, who is a a champion uh, official. Um, Dustin was sent several places in uh, the proximal colonies by Ava Cyrus. All in all, she spent around five or six years in cryosleep, not not too long, um, on several different shorter missions and such. And uh, yeah, her next. Her next mission was to come back to Neptune Station uh, under the commander there. Uh, Linda can't remember her last name. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, the commander of Neptune Station. And Ava Cyrus had put in a special request to have Dustone officially transferred as a... Uh, um, essentially a sock uh, to be her assistant. So she's a military assistant, special operations, or um, obviously she wouldn't be doing, and you can like scan over the letter, she wouldn't be doing anything um, when it comes to violence. It would be intelligence. And uh, it does seem a little odd because Dustone has proven herself to be very capable in in uh so much as tactics strategy uh but she's been used for basically diplomacy a kind of military diplomacy type thing and right. ava cyrus ava cyrus wanted her like as at her side Did like they, officially um, uh, so she was uh had a dipl diplomatic stance uh did yep um she was going to have a diplomatic stance does can you see if she, uh, Dustone had any connection to anyone here at Novus Prime? Uh, Novus Terra. Archangel looks it up. Uh, it doesn't look like she'd ever been out this way. Um, hmm. See, he just sort of like thumbs through lots and lots of code as it wheels by. Uh, you know, it's like watching a 12 year old, uh, you know, playing video games. Like, it's just so someone, fast. He's like, <laughs> someone from her past uh, is like a leader here, or... I mean, there's a few... You said she's from Mars? No, yeah, I don't... Maybe. I don't see... I mean, there's a few people from Mars on here, but no, nothing like Dust Stone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think she was supposed to come out here. No. As he looks wouldn't. out. You think... Oh. No, it says here, uh, as he sounds it out, because he, he can't read it. He's just sounding it out phonetically. Um, it says here that she was going to go with this Ava Cyrus lady. And it's kind of strange. So there's some video surveillance of her. Do you want me to open that video up? Yes, I do. As you do. Uh, you see Duststone entering the cool mint. Uh, no one's on it. It's, it's docked at Neptune Station. And she uh, has this this device she's holding. It's a, some sort of scanner as she's scanning the cool mint. And it, Archangel will fast forward it as she scans the whole ship, uh, does some telemetry. She has a conversation with Alfred. Um, this is just video. And then she leaves.
Uh, can we verify if Ava Cyrus has been in? I guess Ava Cyrus. Uh, do you have any information on her? I see. Uh, yeah, there's well, there's another video. As it is the video you saw before you of saw. Ava Cyrus walking in and dickering, dickering with the cryo chamber. Oh man! All right. Well, um, we know this. Get back to get getting Alfred uh, working again. If you can kind of make what we saw, like if, if if he can, we can get Alfred to forget that we saw any of this. That would be really. Oh, that's easy. For me. As you see, like some lines of code just go, ding, 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 and then like a like a frowny face. Um, <clears throat> as Archangel will will sit there, and since we're in the montage, it's 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 fun. Uh, he says, "Well, there's something a little weird about all this. I mean, I don't know your all's politics, but I don't know why Alfred would hide this information." Oh, I can tell you why. Uh... Ava Cyrus, or someone who looks like Ava Cyrus, uh, in that video, what she was doing is is making our cryo beds not functional. So we would kind of looks at crew, you, crew member in in transit. Um, I'm not sure which one of us, but I think it was pretty random. I'm not sure exactly why why she would do that. As Archangel kind of sits there, mm, I mean, sounds political to me. Uh, yeah, none of us Alf are political. Alfred had an opinion on it. Uh, what did Alfred think about it? Ding, ding, ding. As you see this printout, holographic, and essentially it says this. I won't do it in the Alfred voice. Because <clears throat> it would be a little frustrating. Stop oh, sleeping. He's sleeping. Wee, 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 wee. It basically says this. It is a uh, Special Operations Corps report. It's being sent to Mars. Uh, one of their apparent stations is on Mars, which it's no surprise. Uh, you did not know this, but it's no surprise that one would be on Mars. Um, <clears throat> and it says this. Ava Cyrus... Uh, the evidence is mounting that she is at best somehow attached to the terrorist organization, the CLAD. At worst, she is a high-ranking member who's been uh, a mole for a long time, like 10, 15 years, and has worked her way up in the SSA as an official. Uh, their evidence is not complete, but it seems as though <clears throat> one of the things that she has been doing is just sowing enough discord in the, the outer stations, um, in the commercial uh, the corporations and such, and basically causing tension between the SSA and all the people they work with, uh, stirring up problems. That's, that's what it is. Specifically with Duststone, <clears throat> Alfred does not believe that Duststone is aware that Ava Cyrus <clears throat> is some kind of terrorist. However, she has, on these missions, he extrapolates and then, of course, says that because he's an RI, he's almost infallible. So, of course, he's right. He extrapolates that uh, Duststone has been gathering telemetry and uh, analyzing cryo beds and all of these sorts of things. For what purpose, he doesn't know, but this is something that he thinks that the CLAD is gathering a lot of information about the effects of cryo beds and um, specifically the movements of the PNB, in short. And you... Uh do a little line of code saying that Duststone died in cry sleep. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, As he pauses and looks up, I mean, did she? Oh yeah, I just uh, 
the records might not reflect it. There was a, there was an issue. Uh, she saved everyone on this this crew, but I feel like it's. Uh, he, he looks at the records. He says, "There's huh." It says she's dead, but it doesn't say how. Yeah, just say. As she you died realized, Dolby. As you realized, Dolby. Alfred did not say. He never logged what happened. Yeah. Can you log that she died in cryo sleep? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Thanks. That that kind of helps us out a little bit. You're really a swell guy, uh, I have to say. I know you to Thanks. say Alfred. Uh, but that is uh, that's a little bit of pressure off of my back. I guess we should get back to... Uh, Lieutenant on the board. communique. <laughs> <laughs> They're... They're almost here as we drop right. into the dread. Let's let's get out of here. On the sensors, about three uh about three sail minutes away. Uh they are not yet within uh range of, of Vulcan cannons. If they have uh missiles, they could target you all, but <clears throat> it would be uh, difficult. As Katrina, you're in the cockpit. I'm assuming you can't quite see them. Uh, you can just see them on the on the sensors since it's the black. Uh, Josh will sh will share the screen with you. You see six. Sorry, my bad. Four <clears throat> gnats. They essentially look like uh, starfighters. Like think of like F-16 style starfighters or something out of that B BSG. There are two smaller ships. Uh, you have seen one of these before as they pop up on the sensors as rams. Uh, they look like bullets that have a big ram with a pointy end on the end of them. And they're much smaller. Interesting. So, do we? I mean, I guess we still want to just jump out of here, don't we? Yeah, I think we just uh, we just uh, cut and run. I mean, PNB cool mint. Oh, I'll respond. Uh, yeah. Hey. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, what's going on, guys? We are the new order of Confucius. Oh yeah. At Sounds Novus like Terra. Bizarre love love triangle you you've got yourself into. Uh, you okay. have attacked one of our capital ships. You will be brought to justice. You I'm will done. surrender or be destroyed. Oh, th that that's my line. Uh <laughs> As you hear Josh go, two minutes. Uh, but, but I'll see. And you and see the rockets. Uh, I, I think that uh, you guys are uh, mistaken. We're not here for a fight. Uh, we're just uh, here to do some diplomacy. Um, thanks for stopping by. SSA diplomacy. Up. We look as uh, Katrina. You do see. Uh, Four rockets headed your way. Any, they are two minutes happening. away. When, whenever you're ready, uh, whenever is appropriate. I feel like you're the pilot, but I think we should uh, we should go. They they expended their rockets. Dole says, uh, 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 "Lieutenant, do you do, do you want me to raise shields or?" Uh... Yeah, let's raise shields, but let's get out of here before they get to us. Uh, All right, the action is on you guys. It is player turn. Um... I will go ahead and uh, start firing at the rockets. Are the rockets within yeah. cannon range? Not yet. yet? Not, Not yet. yet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. The rockets have. Should... Go on, sorry. I think we should fire up our little drive and get out of here. Yeah, the rockets have uh, a longer range. Um, they can travel. Up. They can travel the same speed that. Uh, They're traveling at the same speed as the starfighters, and obviously they, they travel faster than them. Yeah. If we don't uh, jump, I will fire at them. Okay. Yeah. 
Katrina is jumping. All right. What are you bid to do this? <coughs> and cool where cat. are you going? Uh, cool cat. I'm bidding Cool Cat. And uh, she, uh, I am, um, I, I came up with a, a jump coordinate that will, and again, it's hard for me to, to do, to make sense of this without like actually seeing it to visualize it. But um, she'll have calculated a jump or a series of jumps if necessary to put us on the backside of the gas giant that the moon is order, or, orbiting. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you'll need to course correct a little bit because the gravity drive pretty much goes in a straight line. Um, and you're not going through hyperspace. You're just bending space and moving. You're warping is essentially what you're doing. Um, like sliding around and uh, in that way are able to achieve light speed. You're actually only going a quarter light speed, though. Does that make sense? Like you're cutting a yeah. shortcut. That's how it's working. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. As you bid cool cat, you'll need to throw down for this. Uh, threshold okay. two is two. Okay. To have your, your, your desired outcome. Before you throw down, roll that chaos die. See if your gravity yeah. drive rocks and rolls. Did you get a one? <laughs> I'm gonna as, use a movement. As with a false start. Uh, <laughs> that one was not a one. That was a three. <laughs> as for a moment, all the lights go out and they flicker. <laughs> Archangel looks up. What? What happened? As you kick off, you're in gravity slip. Uh, we'll see if you get where you want to go. Yeah, I sure do. That would be uh, okay. Hold on, I'm gonna math this. That's four successes. Oh, yeah. So you get a narrative point. Um, it's going to take you about 15 minutes to get to this coordinate. Um, okay. So with the narrative point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, if it works for you, that the moon is actually on the exact opposite side of the gas giant than we were. Sure. You mean you want to move the moon instead of it being down below you? Essentially, yeah. Like, so you want to? You... We're jumping. Yeah, like we happen to get. Yeah, we got lucky that the moon's in like. Well, the capital ship will be in orbit of the moon. Yeah. Right. So, like wherever the moon is around the planet, you're going to be going to where the capital ship is if you go to the moon. Like they're not going to no, just no. sit there and wait for. No, it. no, 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 no. Like I'm going. I'm on the opposite side of the gas giant. So let's say yeah, yeah, that I did. I did. The, 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 the timing worked out where the gas, you know, the planet's on the opposite side of the gas giant and the capital ship's on the opposite side of the moon to us. I dig what you're saying. Okay. So you have you, gas giant, moon, capital ship. Yes. I dig. <clears throat> uh, Skip, as you were ready, as you guys slip into this gravity stream... Do you shoot at them? Because you do go past them. It's just at a very quick rate. Oh. Uh, yeah, if, if we go past them, I, I will shoot. Yeah, you're just moving. You're not at light speed yet. Like, as in you sort of slip into it as space folds around you. And for a split second, you see them kind of there, and then they just elongate, and they're gone. So you have a moment yeah, where you I'll could do shoot. Some, uh, I will fire off some. Could you tell me to shoot first and ask questions? <laughs> All right, what do you bid? Uh, I'm going to bid. Uh, <laughs> Your rock tactical. does not work. No, it doesn't. My rock doesn't work. Tactical. Interesting. We're gonna... That is. Three successes, and I get the trait back. Nice. God damn. Ten. All right, the threshold to hit them, these guys, is three. <clears throat> so you hit it on the head. As you raise up the Vulcan gun, you see the nose as, uh, again, the thunder of it. <clears throat> as you slip into this gravity stream, you see all of what you're seeing, uh, 
you're moving past uh you're you're moving at the same rate as light basically so it kind of does the zoom call thing where it freezes right and and elongates just whoop, spaghetti fies up in front of you as a uh, roll damage point of uh uh what's the mechanics um does the does the rolling a 10 only count on the d10 no 10 up 10. gives you flare yeah. Okay, so good. Yeah. Okay, well in that case, if I got did get, so I will take that back. Yeah, that D twelve is really good. Do what? Uh, ten damage. God damn. Uh, and you guys are scale oh. two, correct? Yeah. So that yeah. means you deal double damage because these are scale one. So it's twenty damage. Two D six plus one. All right, so yeah. we're gonna see, we're gonna see if you popped one. Uh, they do have shields. Uh, Hulker, tell me high or low, and roll a d12, and that'll determine if they had their shields up because they were not expecting you to be high. in gun range. Do you want me to call it and then roll it, or yep? All right, yep. And whatever high. you call is whatever you call. If it's good for you, then it's good for you guys. I'm gonna call high. Yep. That's a one. All right. So, so they do have their shields up. Uh, Dolby, would you like to roll two d4? Plus one. I'd like to roll two two d four, but I only have one d four, so I have to roll it twice. My my two D, that is three uh, four. Four? So four. So uh, it absorbs four of the twenty damage, uh, as some of the the explosive rounds are shunted off this gnat's shields, uh, but sixteen of them go through the shields, and it has ten vitality, as. Ooh. The uh, I'll let you describe what happens, Skip. Uh, so as I'm as you see us start to blink out, all they see are these tracers coming straight at them. And, oh no! <laughs> and it hits them, and they're like, at first they're like, okay, because it goes, and they see it bounce off, and then all of a sudden it just starts ripping through, <laughs> and it explodes. The guy's like, go 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 go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he is vaporized within his cock cockpit and his cock and his and the, 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 <laughs> he's just pits as he explodes. Uh, we'll see if it's the same guy that was talking shit. Uh, Drizzle, roll a d12 and call high or low. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's low. It's not the same guy. All right. As it was a different, it, it was like his his friend, my friend. You don't even oh, have a name, Goose. <laughs> goose. <laughs> All right, as you guys pop out of the dread, back into the montage. Um, Katrina, do you think you could drop one of those little communication buoys, kind of, in a in a way where, like, while we're traveling, maybe we could halfway through establish communication with the the planet is that sort of thing exist where we triangulate you know we're on the other side but there's a communication buoy in between us does that does that ex i don't know dm is good that a idea, thing that you can do i mean yeah dude, i like it but that's, that's a good question dm can i do that first of all i'm not a dm uh, do what, arbiter, he's an arbiter. arbiter, whatever you know what I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you guys uh, have two buoy, two communication buoys on these. Uh, so the the communication buoys they're about the size of uh, half the size of a person, um, and they can be you can use them for several things. They can be relays. So let's say you drop them uh, a few light years away then it can speed up communication because essentially you, you put it in a gravity well and so it causes a shortcut so the light travels less of a distance. That's how you can communicate faster. It is, we can call it subspace. It's essentially subspace. Do the comm buoys have any kind of maneuvering thrusters on them? Yes, but um, they... <laughs> yeah, they have ion drives essentially. Um and 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 little gas uh, maneuvering thrusters, whereas you guys have those and nuclear fusion thrusters, which is how you can do 
maneuvering uh, and dogfighting. Your solar sails are faster than your nuclear uh, thrusters, though. You can go much faster speeds with your sails. Do you think that... Um, can we can we pick them back up? Like once yeah, of course. Of course. It? Uh, you can launch them. There's all sorts of tactics you can do with a yeah. with a buoy. I think we, we kind of launch it out. They um, can they can go into orbit. Um, they can go into a planet. Supposedly they can land on a planet, uh, but oh, wow. they they couldn't breach the atmosphere once they've sure. landed. Katrina um, will actually you'll you'll see her start doing some some calculations on the computer. Here's a thought for you if we're gonna do that. Why don't I put? Why don't I drop it off on the other, like not the other side? How should I put this? On the next half, uh, next quarter of the planet as we're passing by, and um, well, so that way it's still in their blind spot. Are you guys but... using a VPN in space, <laughs> like a proxy? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. So my. Um, anyways, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So I'm going to put it in their blind spot, and I'm going to relay our communications through it uh, and try and spoof them into thinking that that's where we are as opposed to the other side of the planet. Well, if, if I don't want to lose the buoy. I just want to talk to them. So if you can hide the buoy uh, and uh, like make it hard for them to like maybe drop it nearer to the sun but just so like because we won't be able to communicate directly with them through the sun i don't think so this is just to have a community uh uh because they'll take our bowie a bowie oh i don't want to give them our bowie well we already know that the capital ship probably isn't going to come out yeah of, it's true uh... i just want to I want a dialogue where they don't know where we are. <clears throat> I think I, I think, guess I think this will work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like and, and 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 again, this is this is this is me trying to describe my thinking to you without actual visual aids. Katrina would have visual aids that sure. that, <laughs> that she would be yeah, able. Enough. Well, it's it's actually in your favor because in this way, it's what do you want to happen, and we let your bid and the threshold handle. The actual logistics. There. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. As, as someone who's really like a geek about space stuff. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's just so hard. It's just, it's, it's so fucking complicated. Like, yeah. The, 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 our... the geometry of, of, of orbit is so complicated. We don't need to get into it. It's cool, but there's no reason to get into it. Also, you're not really playing a character at that point. You're playing yourself funnel through a character and it's like that's not what you know. i never do such a thing like yeah it's that. like someone who like <laughs> talks about guns like well, technically this gun <laughs> like it's a space gun you guys never done anything <laughs> like that before space gun. Either. <laughs> BFG. all right so as you the bfg 9000 as you guys scoot around a few jumps and you find yourself on the opposite side of Novus Prime, the gas giant. Uh, in typical Star Trek fashion, your sensors are <clears throat> uh, confused by the magnetic poles, which is kind of the whole idea here. You're hiding in a bit of a blind spot. Uh, last you saw, Josh looks up, he says, uh, it's essentially as, as you, you described, Katrina, as you wanted the capital ship is exactly where you wanted it to be, as is the moon. You're not in a straight line, but effectively you are. Do I need to make a bid to have dropped off the buoy where I wanted it to? Uh, yeah, where do you want the buoy? Basically, if if we're, you know, if, if, the, if the capital ship is here and we're here, I'd want the buoy, like, over here. Yeah. It's like, so on the next the quarter of the planet. <clears throat> yeah. So, <clears throat> the issue... The issue that you're going to have has to do with the orbit of uh, the capital ship is orbiting the moon, which is orbiting the gas giant. You guys yeah. are orbiting the gas giant, keeping, making sure that your 
locked and and locked with the moon right so you're never encountering the moon is the idea yeah. uh see this gets super fucking complicated because <laughs> technically you are moving around faster you're just making sure you're rotating around the moon rotating around the planet as fast as the moon itself which means as the moon moves the capital ship's doing this <laughs> where do you want your buoy you want your buoy to be doing the same thing just on that quarter edge on of... the next quarter yeah okay. yeah yeah that makes sense so you do need a bid for this uh you don't need to throw down you've already made the throw down for these complex calculations uh so for this one i'll bid line of greatness nice uh everyone on the bridge sees telmus doing this and uh it's like watching someone who's really good at math just throw down calculations in her head and there's a moment where uh the buoy needs to be prepped alice and whoever wants to help her will go no, get actually the keg actually, of the buoy but just because but... i feel like it'll be a fu- it'll be a funnier bid and it kind of makes more sense for her character anyway mm-hmm. i'm gonna bid script kitty so basically like you know in terms of like yeah, obviously they'll still see what you just described, but in Katrina's Katrina's head, she's basically running through a bunch of like, you know, plug and play stuff from her mind jack to mm. fill it like to you know to make up this code that she's coming up with. Oh, that's cool. I dig it. So it actually makes it easier on your brain, and so then you have the cybernetics. It's really neat. I'll give you a narrative point for that, mm. as Alice is struggling. Uh, she's not struggling. It's fucking space. As she pulls, maybe uh, Dolby, you see her walking this keg of a uh, uh, of a buoy along through the cryo beds. As she locks and loads it into the chute, where you know uh, rockets would go, thunk, tank. She goes locked and loaded. The buoy goes out, sends out thrusters and such, corrects itself. You guys are where you all right last scene <clears throat> some time has passed uh 25 30 minutes at this point since you all encountered the starfighters we're in the dread actions on you all we're in the montage or the dread the dread still in the dread so um, Katrina, after, after that's all done, Katrina will sort of sit back and put her hands behind her head. So, what do you want to talk? You got, I'm guessing we're going to talk to him next. I'm going to bid Josh to to uh, keep his alert on sensors if we're in the dread. Okay. Josh has been bid. Uh, so his one use is good since you guys already had a uh, a scene. You got that one back. Oh, nice. Um, so what, uh, yeah, good job, Katrina. Nice work. Uh, what, what do you think we should do next? I say we, uh, we should notify the planet of surrender or, you know, try to open up a conversation again, because the last conversation didn't work. Uh, I think we need to give them a minute, a little bit, you know, make them think maybe we took off or I don't know. What do you think? Uh, like are you idea. asking me, sir? No. Alice looks I'm over. I'm not asking you, Alice. I just, I like, to, I like to think out loud sometimes. Cherokee will say, well, um, I mean, Dolby. Dolby is what he calls you. Uh, Dolby. Hey, Dolby. Uh, you know, I mean, we should, we should, shouldn't we just land? And, uh, you know, shouldn't we get in touch with, uh, this Confucius character. I mean, uh, you know, if we just talk to him, you know, then uh, maybe we could get this 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 situated. Sure. Well, it seems like there was a little bit of a power struggle on their their bridge. Uh, they were going um, through their own little m- mutiny. That was uh, the capital ship. We on the we capital the ship. Planet, if we go to the planet directly and talk to the leaders. I think if sure. we go to the planet directly, if, the capital ship is going to try to kill us. What if we just took out the capital ship and then 
found a few pieces of that capital ship and, and brought it back as souvenirs and proof we did our job. I, I think that's a good uh, plan B. <laughs> that's a strong plan B. Um, I think I think we message... Uh, I, can, can we message the planet? Josh looks up. Yeah, of course. I don't know if they listen to it, but... Or we could message. Um, I, I I think we just open a open the frequency and and message. Well, everybody. A broadcast. Yeah. Why don't we just? He switches broadcast. it to broadcast mode. All right. As he uh, taps into the buoy, <laughs> cut scene. The buoy, its its antenna point to you guys, and then lights up. <laughs> I'll actually look over at Dolby. Do you? want me to handle this for a moment just since we're since i guess one of our hopefully one of the talking points would be that i can negotiate i, uh, I think we both better I trade deal we, let me open it up and then and then i'll let you add your part I, i'm gonna do the greeting say hello everybody we're here and then actually you know you have a good point I said hello last time, and we started shooting each other. Maybe, maybe a softer touch to the populace would be good. Uh, it allows for the leaders of this community to save face when they're going to bow to us. So yeah, no, I think I think we do what 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 your idea is. If you, if you want to wing it, maybe maybe you should tell me what you want to say first. <laughs> well. I'm simply going to negotiate with the planet on behalf of Mars as a neutral third party and on behalf of Telmar Shipping, which my family owns, to help negotiate better terms for their uh, for their product to be delivered. That's great. All right, let's go with that. Um, the button's right there. Katrina will... Um, well, sort of, you know, you'll see her put her hands on top of her head and she centers herself. And she she lets go and touch, you know, presses the button. As you press the button, cutscene, the buoy directs towards the planet as Josh uh, tools around on the sensors, to, 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 giving the buoy the telemetry for the settlement um, or the main settlement on the planet. <clears throat> The comms open. Uh, it is a broadcast that just sends anyone listening could hear it, but anyone in this sector is not going to hear it. Like they have to be within the line of blast, if you will. There's some stat static at first as Josh cleans it up. And you hear. As this Johnny old Cash. radio, Johnny Cash is playing. <laughs> As Josh looks up at you and gives you the nod of you're on. This is Katrina Telmus, temporary crew member of the Clean Mint. Is it Cool Mint? Cool mint, cool mint. <laughs> and actually, that'll be part of the actual. That's all in it. <laughs> That's all in it. <laughs> Temporary crew cool. member of the cool mint. I am the granddaughter of Arthurius Telmus and current next in line as head of a Telmar Chipping. I am empowered on behalf of my family to negotiate as a Martian le um, leader. For better terms and nego and uh, agreements in regards to in regards to establishing n normalized trade relations with your settlement, any who would wish to speak with me and open the dialogue for those negotiations to begin is welcome to do so. However, please understand that Prime Government has decided to send a warship as you well know 
My hope is that we can resolve this peacefully because it would be good for you and, admittedly, it would be good for my family. However, I have no power to dictate what actions the prime government makes in regards to a failure of trade, re trade relations to continue. What do you bid? Uh, line of greatness for this one. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Bidding line of greatness. There's a cutscene on the planet. Bit of a desert planet type thing. There's some very steel blue brackish water off in the distance. There's this settlement that looks very communist. Um, very blocky uh, old school colonies. Uh, white sandstone <clears throat> bleached by the two suns, these these bluish, uh, or one is blue, one is actually orange. <clears throat> Zoom into this massive office. It almost it's a third floor. Uh, think of like a uh, like a warehouse feel. Large windows that have tent all of them or all over them. Ground is concrete. There's this huge old rug. Uh, ornate, probably something that came out of uh, an aristocrat's house uh, on Mars, or perhaps Prime. This enormous wooden desk also carted over you know, 200 years ago when this colony was settled. There's some domes here and there uh, that, that preserve uh, wildlife and uh, uh, some, some flora, some trees and such. In this room, a man is sitting, leaning back in this massive, cushy chair. Uh, his feet, boots, are on uh, the table. <clears throat> There's stationery over. There's some whiskey, like a whiskey globe, and all this kind of stuff. A big map behind him on the wall with uh, tax in it, showing the movements of something. There are a few other people in here, uh, all military, um, scarred up, weathered from the sun, all of them in their 40s and 50s, uh, men and women. The man sitting at the desk, he's got a little Che Guevara goatee, probably in his 40s, very uh, Soviet uh feel to him. He's got this duster on. There's a scar on his face. And he kind of has this laissez-faire attitude as he's holding some scotch, uh, you know, prized uh, from Prime. As he's drinking some of it, this communique, it almost looks like a box radio with antenna, comes to life and your voice erupts from it. As he spits out the scotch on the desk. A very serious look crosses this man's face. It's strange, because uh, ser serious looks rarely cross his face. And he looks over at Captain Jareth Godfried of the Prime Marine Corps sitting opposite him. A knowing look. As Captain Jareth looks at his men, they all stand up and hurry out of the room. You get no response. And that's where we're going to end. Into that's space! <laughs> Well, welcome to another episode of Dreadlores and to Space. Please stick around uh, for our after hours. Uh, space, 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 space. Where we discuss spaceship stuff uh, and all the things that are going on inside the minds of our characters uh, as we proceed in this space opera. 
uh, Dreadlores Into Space is uh, a group effort with a cast of Bill Bunkum, um, Ken Howe, Daniel Hulker, Drizzle, Andrea Elliott Johnson, uh, with the score by all lowercase letters and Mr. Interrupt. Uh, our Patreon members are really our favorite people. Tim Roberts, Daniel Hulker, Daniel Hulker, and Nostalgic. Uh, please join our Patreon. Art Media by Couchfire Media. Story Elements and, and all that other stuff is uh, by Twile Replay Productions. Subscribe today, soldier. Subscribe and become a citizen in our Into Space campaign. Stick around for After Hours. <clears throat> after Hours. Which is happening um, right now. All right, let's take a short break. Uh, can you guys stay around for like 10, 15 minutes? No, I gotta go. All right, bye. Yeah, I'll probably just do that all to you. But bye. bye. Good, good, good bye. job, Andrea, on your. Yeah, no oh. joke. No joke.